Starflight's experience with Dragon Queens thus far had not exactly been wonderful. M me He stammered. Now? You mean right now? Shouldn't I... I mean, I'm, I'm not really uh, prepared to... Uh, I, I don't really look to see, to see a queen. I mean, <laughs> maybe... Stop blithering and follow me. Morisir swept out of the cave with a growl. Go, go, go! Mighty Claws hissed, flapping his wings as Starflight hesitated. Starflight's claws caught on small holes in the rocky floor, and he stumbled as he chased after the giant Nightwing. Volcanic rock, he thought, peering at the walls around him. I wondered when it last erupted. From the rumbling under his talons and the heat rising through the floor, it didn't seem like the most dormant volcano. Morisir led the way up a winding tunnel without looking back. My friends, Starflight started to say, Sunny and the others, are they... The large black dragon didn't turn around. Starflight kept walking for a few minutes, then took a deep breath and tried again. When can I go back? His only answer was a snort of disgust. Starflight swallowed his questions and nervously tucked his wings in. The walls felt like they were getting closer. He didn't see any guards or rivers of lava. He didn't see any other night wings at all. But as they moved along the tunnel, Starflight heard something up ahead. A hissing, murmuring sound that grew louder as they approached. Dragon voices, jumbled and arguing. Dread prickled through every scale of Starflight's body. If he hadn't been more terrified of what Morosir would do to him, he would have turned and bolted down back toward the tunnel. Finally, Morosir and Starflight stepped through an archway into a cave full of dragons. The walls were packed with dragon wings, with night wings hanging from crags and rocks and the ceiling like bats. One by one, dark-scaled dragon heads turned toward them. The gathered night wings fell silent. A last voice cried, We should attack now! We should have attacked yesterday! before it cut it off abruptly as the speaker noticed Starflight. Starflight wondered again if he was dreaming, because this was his biggest nightmare come to life. A room full of angry Nightwings, all of them glaring at him. Watch it, Morisiro growled as Starflight stumbled into him, and then Starflight saw what lay ahead of their talons. A few steps into the cave, the rocky path abruptly fell away on either side, even only a thin strip of stone to stand on. Below him was a bubbling lake of glowing orange lava. He could feel the heat crackling along the scales. Morosir stepped back to the safety of the doorway and prodded Starflight forward, so the dragonette was left alone on the spur of rock, surrounded by lava. Lava and night wings. And they're all reading my mind, he thought with another jolt of terror. They can see all my thoughts. They know I'm terrified and weak and useless and that I don't think Blister should be the next Sandwing Queen and I think that this is a horrible place to live and... Stop thinking all about those things I don't want them to see in my head! With a massive snort, Starflight focused on the details of the room around it. Think about what you see, don't think about anything else. First, there weren't actually hundreds of dragons staring at him. He did a quick estimate, hiding his other thoughts inside mountains of numbers. Maybe 40? About 40 black dragons filled the cave, most of them as large as Morosir, which meant they must be quite old. They were all as thin as the dragonettes in the dormitory, and many of them had worn patches on their scales, sores on their snouts and wings, and traces of blood around their nostrils. These dragons looked like the tribal opposite of the colorful, healthy, well-fed rain wings. There was a clear spot on the cave walls right across from him. It looked like a circle had been carved in the rock, as wide across as Starflight's wingspan, then jabbed full of small holes none of them bigger than a dragon's eye. The other dragons kept glancing at this circle as if waiting for it to do something. On a ledge beside the circle perched a dragon with a scar rippling down her chest. Her wings drooped in an odd way as if they were weighted down with rocks, and she wore a cluster of diamonds around her neck. Another chain of smaller teardrop diamonds was wound around the horns on her head. But that beat can't be the queen, Starflight thought. She didn't have authority in her bones. She didn't radiate power all the way through her wingtips like the other queens he had met. It took him only a moment of puzzling this out before he realized that there must be a dragon behind the screen, staring through those holes at him. A chill sliced through his scales. Nobody could see her, but her presence filled the cave like heavy smoke. The Queen of the Nightwings. The scrolls always referred to her as mysterious and unknown, but Starflight hadn't imagined that she would keep herself hidden even from her own tribe. Why? Because it's extra terrifying, he answered himself. This is him, barked one of the dragons. Yes, Marcia growled. 
We snatched him from the rainforest this morning. Wings rustled uneasily all around the cave. Has he told us anything? Asked another dragon. What do they know? What are they planning? How soon will they escape? And how did a ringwing escape? Another one shouted as several dragons began to speak at once. We heard the reports that there was a mudwing with her. A mudwing? How did he get there? Why didn't he kill them before they all got away? They're talking about Glory and Clay, Starflight thought with a shudder. That's the ringwing I warned you about, Morisir snarled. The one the Talons of Peace got to replace the Skywing they lost. He spat into the lava. This is exactly why I told them to kill her. Oh, Ringwing of all things, said the dragon with the diamonds. What an unfortunate mistake. We had her, said a dragon with twisted horns. Here, in our talons, and nobody killed her. Who knows what she saw, cried another dragon. If she warns the Ringwings what we're planning. She can't possibly know that, Morisir said. She knows about the tunnel between our kingdoms, challenged a dragon from the far wall. And that little one escaped with her. She'll have told her everything she saw in the fortress. What if they figured it out? A clamor of voices filled the cave. Figure what out? Starflight looked down at his talons and wished they weren't shaking so much. He was half afraid that he'd tremble himself off balance and into the lava. But that wasn't even in the top 20 things he was worrying about right now. What were they planning? He glanced up at the screen where the queen was hidden. She hadn't spoken at all yet, but he could feel her watching. From the way his skin prickled, he thought she hadn't taken her eyes off him since he entered the cave. All at once, the dragon with the diamonds leaned toward the screen, tilting her head. A hush fell instantly around the room. Nothing moved except the bloop, bloop of bubbles in the lava. Every Nightwing present seemed to be holding his or her breath. Starflight didn't hear anything. No queen's voice issuing regally from her hiding spot. But the diamond dragon nodded and straightened up again. Queen Battle Winner says to shut up and ask him. To his horror, she pointed at Starflight. That's why he's here. Make him tell us what they know and what they're going to do next. The listening dragons all swiveled their heads toward him. Falling into the lava suddenly sounded like a pretty good option. Um... Starflight stammered several times. I, um, uh... Speak or I will kill you now, Morrisseer growled behind him. Starflight pressed his front talons together and took a deep breath. Her name is Glory, he blurted. The dragons all hissed. This was not something they cared about. She, she said you have Rainwing prisoners. Please tell me she's wrong. Tell me this is all a mistake. But no one corrected him. Should he tell them Glory's plan? That she was trying to become queen of the Rainwings so she could build an army to come rescue her their lost dragons? That they shouldn't underestimate her? Would he be betraying his friends if he said all of that to the Nightwings? Or would he be betraying his tribe if he didn't? The close, smoky air in the cave pressed down around Starflight. What if I can fix everything? This is the chance you wanted. You asked Glory to let you talk to the Renate Wings. You wanted to give them a chance to explain themselves. You wanted to find a peaceful solution so you wouldn't have to pick sides in a war. But now there he was, facing their dark eyes, he couldn't find any of the brilliant words he'd meant to use. Suddenly, one of the nearest dragons snapped. Just tell us if they're planning an attack! I yes, Starflight blurted. I mean, I, I think so. This met with such an uproar that Starflight had to sit down and cover his head with his wings. He had said the worst possible thing. He had made everything worse for Glory and the Rainwings, and he couldn't even bring himself to speak up and try that famous diplomacy he had always thought was a such a good idea. They wouldn't listen to me anyway, he told himself, but he didn't know if that was true. He wasn't brave enough to find out. It doesn't matter, rasped a hoarse, wet voice. Ring wings are no match for us. A horribly disfigured dragon pushed past Morrisir, slithered into the cave, and glowered at the other dragons. 
His snout was twisted and deformed by a terrible scar that had closed one nostril, melted several scales, and left nasty, oozing bubbles along his jawline. The dragon with the diamonds frowned. Vengeance, you are not invited to this council. Yeah, I noticed, he hissed. And yet I know more than any dragon about the rain wings and what they can do. He gestured to his face. And I can tell you that this was a fluke. Rain wings are too stupid and cowardly to be dangerous. Most of you know I caught this when I grabbed their queen. Well, it turns out just one of their queens, stupid tribe. And she had no idea what she was doing or I'd be dead. She didn't even mean to spray me. They never do. Vengeance took, shook his head, breathing loudly through his mouth. They have Piria's most powerful weapon, and they're too pathetic to use it. Maybe they were before this glory came along, said one of the other dragons. From what Morosir says about her, she's not as weak as the rest of them. You have no idea, Starflight thought. And it's your fault they found out about us, the Diamond Dragon said. You're the one who brought her here, even though Deathbringer warned us the Dragonets were in the forest, and that we should stay away until they were done. Deathbringer, Vengeance smirked. Oh yeah, how is your little pet greatness? I've heard a very interesting story about him. He turned and beckoned with his tail. Starflight recognized the Nightwing assassin who was dragged into the cave by four guards. It was starting to get crowded on the ledge by the door. Vengeance seized Deathbringer's ear and virtually threw him onto the stone outcropping with Starflight. They knocked into each other and flung out their wings for balance. Deathbringer wasn't much bigger than Starflight after all. He looked larger when he was attacking Queen Blaze and threatening glory. But here, in the same lava predicament as Starflight, with everyone looking just as displeased with him, he seemed a lot less intimidating. Ah, he said to Starflight in a friendly way. You're here too. His eyes looked as if he wanted to ask something, but didn't dare. This dragon, Vengeance bellowed, pointing at Deathbringer. This pet assassin of Princess Greatness was actually conspiring with the enemy. He is the one who brought the Mudwing here, and he helped them both to escape. Princess, Starflight thought. So the Diamond Dragon, Greatness, speaks for her mother for some reason. Hang on, Deathbringer said, hopping neatly over Starflight's head, so the Dragonette was between him and Vengeance. He looked around at the other dragons and spread his wings in an innocent air. Conspire with the enemy? Do you have any proof? Yeah, I have witnesses, Vengeance hissed. One of the gods she attacked on the way out saw you helping them. And the gods he distracted from the tunnel so the Mudwing could come through. They can tell us all about that. A terrible silence followed. Starflight wondered whether they were all searching Deathbringer's mind to find out what was true. He kept his own mind carefully blank just in case. Deathbringer, said Greatness, twisting her diamond necklace in her front claws. That kind of betrayal, the punishment is death. The Nightwing Assassin spread his wings and bowed deeply toward the Queen. I swear I've only ever done what I thought would be best for my tribe. Oh yeah? Vengeance coughed wetly. <laughs> so why are the Dragonettes still alive then? Deathbringer glanced under his wing and met Starflight's eyes. There was a question in them, and this time Starflight guessed what it was. Are they? All still alive? Starflight nodded as imperceptibly as he could and a look of relief flitted across Deathbringer's face, then was gone. My mission is not yet complete, it's true, Deathbringer said. I need to return to the rainforest and betray us some more, Vengeance suggested. I bet you do. Starflight noticed Greatness leaning toward the screen again, but most of the dragons were staring at Deathbringer and didn't seem to notice. I assure you I am a loyal Nightwing, Deathbringer said, his voice rising. Perhaps I think it's worth discussing whether we really need to kill these dragonettes, but- You see? Roared Vengeance. He's- Vengeance! Greatness shouted, cutting him off. 
She stood up on her ledge and spread her wings, revealing the silver scales glittering underneath like echoes of her diamonds. She puffed up her chest and contorted her face as if she was trying to appear menacing and regal, but it looked like a performance. Starflight still couldn't see a future queen in her. The queen has spoken, Greatness said into the perilous silence. Vengeance! You endanger the whole tribe! You disobeyed orders! You brought a viper to us disguised as a simple garden snake! Wait! Vengeance cried. What he did was worse! I just grabbed a rain wing, same as always! How could I know? She didn't look no different than the others! And in addition, said Greatness, you are irritating the queen! She flicked her tail, just the tiniest movement, at the guards in the doorway. No! shrieked Vengeance. His wings flapped open, but he had barely lifted off when the four guards grabbed him. With one swift heave, before Starflight even had time to blink, they hurled the scarred dragon into the lake of lava.